The next thing the bile does as it moves through the intestines is to balance the immune system. When most people think of the immune system, they think of white blood cells floating through the bloodstream. But over one half of the immune system is actually located in the intestines. The job of the immune system in the intestines is much more difficult than that in the bloodstream. Infections only rarely make it into the blood, but every day our intestines are exposed to millions of parasites, bacteria, and fungi. Because the intestinal immune system is continually at war with these microbes, it is much easier for it to become overly aggressive and start to attack our own tissue. What bile does is to regulate the intestinal immune system, helping to prevent it from becoming overly aggressive and causing autoimmune disorders. If you're suffering from a gut-related autoimmune disorder, it may be because of a blockage of bile flow. The last thing that bile does in the intestines is to kill parasites and candida. Tests show that even the healthiest person still has some degree of parasitic and fungal infection. While there are many antiparasitic and antifungal remedies available in the marketplace, most of them are mildly toxic and therefore unsuitable for daily use. If, however, your bile flow is healthy, then you have a built-in defense against parasites and candida. Well, that about covers what bile does to maintain the health of the intestines and what happens when bile can't get into the intestines in proper amounts due to the presence of biliary sludge and gallstones. Now, let's turn our attention to what happens when biliary sludge and gallstones cause toxins to back up into the bloodstream. Just as the kidneys remove water-soluble toxins from our bodies, the liver removes fat-soluble toxins from our bodies by putting them into the bile. If the bile gets clogged up due to biliary sludge and or gallstones, then the fat-soluble toxins can't get out and they start to build up in the body. One of the first signs that bile is backing up is an increase in cholesterol. This happens because the only way cholesterol can leave the body is through the bile. Impaired bile excretion causes cholesterol levels to rise. It's that simple. In addition to the levels of cholesterol rising, bilirubin levels can also begin to rise. If they get to be bad enough, you can see the whites of a person's eyes and sometimes their skin take on a yellow tint. The technical term for this is jaundice. While an increase in cholesterol and bilirubin levels in the body is easy to recognize, the accumulation of other toxins is not. Literally thousands of toxins and chemicals are processed by the liver for removal through the bile each day. When gallstones and biliary sludge prevent these toxins from leaving the body, they begin to accumulate in the bloodstream and the tissues, causing all sorts of problems. Dissolving gallstones and biliary sludge is an often overlooked but vitally important part of any detoxification program. The last problem we will discuss that is caused by bile backing up into the bloodstream has to do with immune function. As we said earlier, Bile plays an important role in the immune system of the intestines by keeping it from becoming overly aggressive. Unfortunately, what's good for the immune system of the intestines is terrible for the rest of the body. Studies have shown that when bile acids are present in the bloodstream, they inhibit chemotaxis and phagocytosis. These are fancy words for how well white blood cells can locate, move towards, and swallow infectious microbes. Thus, what starts out as a beneficial immunoregulative action in the intestines becomes an immunosuppressive action in the bloodstream and the tissues. 
These are all effects of bile backing up in the bloodstream. The final set of problems we will discuss is how biliary sludge and gallstones can affect the neighboring organs. In addition to bile acids backing up into the bloodstream, bile can also back up into the pancreas and liver where it can cause alkaline burns. This is because the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder all share the same basic plumbing, the common bile duct. There are valves that keep the bile from backing up into the liver and pancreas. If a small stone finds its way into one of these valves, the valve can get stuck in the open position. If this happens, then every time the gallbladder contracts to squeeze the bile into the small intestines, it can also squeeze the bile into the pancreas and the liver, causing caustic alkali burns and irritation. You see, very alkaline substances can burn us just as easily as very acidic ones. And with a pH of 9.5, bile is very alkaline. Mild alkali burns for a short time in these organs may only result in local irritation. But over a long period of time, these alkali burns can cause diabetes, hepatitis, and cancer.